All right, here we go, guys. Welcome back to the CB Rivals podcast. Uh, this is season one, episode episode eight this time around, and I'm joined by Mark of Guy and Corto. Um, I'm CB, TO organizer for CB Rivals, and we are actually heading for a very exciting conclusion of the season one. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys agree with me about that one. It's been, been so it's very dramatic the way it's going to end at this point in time as well. There's so many people in contention for different reasons and different mm-hmm. things. So it's, uh, it's definitely been exciting end to the second first full on season um or so to speak the first season yeah last week is looking to be very exciting uh, because yes. all the divisions are pretty close together uh the play in the rust deck the feudal division like there are so many games that might actually be very important going into next season and also just for the season win of course with surf slayer against plebs being the main one um like to decide who's going to win the whole season of course but all the other matches actually matter just uh, just as much Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the last week will be very important, and uh, like, like you say, their player base play it's a, it's a final. It's a uh, it's like a final for uh, for. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. This season, and uh, and uh, for the another yeah for another um, uh, division, uh, it's uh, we can say the same, but. Uh, YR, YR, we do a very good uh, uh, parkour, and uh, with Kebab, we will see we, on the last match uh, mm-hmm. with, with uh, we wish we, uh, can make a difference, uh, which difference it, it will be. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. It's all good. Yeah, so we'll talk later about like what exactly could happen in in all divisions. Um, there's actually some crazy tiebreakers that that could uh, develop. I hope we don't get there, but who knows? More games, also more fun, I guess. Um, we'll see what happens uh, during the weekend. Um, but Mark, before we start off with that, yeah, I was going to say more. Yeah, tiebreaks means it's more of a competition. <laughs> yeah, true, absolutely, and it's something that actually surprises me. Um, um, Corto and I, at the start of the season, we were wondering if the format would give us like a very exciting like story throughout the season um but it's actually proven to be pretty good i think like if you look at the feudal division uh, you can see surf slayer and plebs facing each against each other in the last game which is very lucky but that actually is going to be the conclusion who's going to get first or second place in the rustic division we will have yaa kebabs and odin's legion still fighting for first place and if yaa and kebabs um, take the three points they might actually even be f- forced to play a tiebreaker to decide the season winner uh, for the rustic division and then in the playing division we have almost all teams who can still make it to second place impact esports already winning that one because they are um like so much ahead yeah they, they, yeah, they <laughs> That's one of the only teams I think I've not actually got the chance to watch or mm. see so far is Impact Esports, and these guys seem to be performing pretty well too as well. So I'm a bit gutted about that one, but um, it's good to see that there's a, a team in there that clearly, well, clearly knows it needs to be up further a wee bit and has got a chance to be in this uh, mm-hmm. in the next league above for sure. They've, they've shown their, their might and uh, ready to kind of experience the, the feudal division. Yeah, for sure. Oh, sorry, Rustic Division is, isn't it? And then it's the Feudal Division. Sorry, yeah, well, uh, get myself mixed up with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Up into the Rustic Division. You're, you're actually right. Like the um, so the the Impact Esports guys, they might actually go to the to the to the to the first division right away, um, if we get enough teams for next season to join. Because um, we're looking to play with ten teams in each division, and this means that if if we take a look at the Sea Rival rules that we have, um, the idea is <laughs> that the first place from the play and actually goes straight to the highest division so if we have enough teams then impact esports could actually join the highest division right away and then um, we could have uh, yeah all the other teams from like three teams from the rustic division in there as well and then two teams from the feudal division would go down to the rustic division and then we have some playing teams going to the rustic division as well and all the rustic division teams actually stay in that division for the most part and then some new teams might join and we will have another play in division, so to speak. Yeah. But we'll see at the end of the season how it goes and where everybody will end up. It also depends on what happens in the off-season, how many teams join or maybe even quit, um, depending on how they feel about all of it, of course. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, all right. So 
I'm pretty sure you're, you guys yeah. are very excited for Zero Slayer versus Plebs. Um, so let's just talk about that one first then. What are your ideas about uh, about that game? Is, is this what the is this is the game? This is the game that's pretty much determines who finishes right mm. on top, right? Yep, straight away. Yeah, um, the way it takes it all. It does need surf slayers, obviously, to to outright win for them the chance to win. Yeah. So, and plebs have been not beaten yet. So I mean, plebs are probably going in on the back of this one with the the kind of advantage in a way that they've not been beaten in any kind of like match up yet. Um, mm -hmm. not even a not even a tiebreaker. Uh, surf slayers have tied one, so like it's a tie, but they never completely lost it. So I mean, it's it is like a a close points difference in that terms of that. The fact that there's there's not like a straight off win difference but mm -hmm. make, this makes it more interesting for the last one serfs have won tournaments prior to this and obviously plebs have done as well so it's the experience two experienced teams really going back forward to each other mm -hmm. for the the final of this one which is going to be a really good one to watch yeah absolutely and uh, like you said looking at the teams like plebs I'm not clearly too sure actually who's casting is it me yeah yeah, yeah. Might get the cast. Yeah, the, the last final one. So yeah, it will be, be you, fun. you, Nine Fingers, uh, and I'll, I'll be doing the camera work. We'll, we will all be on it together. So yeah, that'll be really exciting. Um, and we'll, we'll like all the feudal games will be casted oh, in, be good. in all languages as well. So that'll be good. And then for the rustic division and playing division, we will also be having an English cast. I will try to do all the games. Um, like one one caster will try to do all the playing games. One caster will try to do all the. Uh, rustic games and we'll be doing a co-cast on the on the feudal games so that'll be pretty exciting i hope it will be like a true finals um where you can actually if you're interested in one of the specific division you can watch all the games and mm -hmm. get to see how it all ends up so that'll be pretty good um yeah so going back to the teams like i feel like it's it's such a good story because at the start of the season surf slayer didn't go into it um, being a team that everybody felt very strong about um they didn't perform like in the season zero they of course have, have won like championships for the for conquest blade but that was a well, long ago in a way i guess um, but we all knew that they are really strong individuals with jackie train with all this <laughs> guy right i mean they've got some of the strongest players in the team um but they they didn't they hadn't shown up in the last season and then the youth plebs were considered the strongest team in europe right now and are even performing on the frontier league um, and they're just like winning every single game. They are undefeated now for almost mm -hmm. two seasons, uh, winning every sing single game since game three in the finals from last season. So that's such a stark contrast if you see where both teams are coming from. So, Cordo, what do you think? I mean, you've yeah, seen it's, both it's teams. It's a pretty scary position to be in, though, and you've, you've not lost. Mm hmm absolutely and so Corto, i mean you've seen both teams yeah i mean in the uh, court tournament as well I, the CDL. I see a bus yeah. team uh... yeah yeah we see the bus team before in different events and but uh, uh pleb it's um maybe a, a older team mm -hmm. uh the the player know uh themselves uh, a longer time but uh search player it's uh, all players are very good and uh, for me it's uh, the the two best team in, on EU, EU one we can find mm -hmm. and uh, be, uh all, all um, the both team are experimented as uh, they know the event like this and uh, for me it's a very the, the big final uh, for the um, for this competition yeah for sure and I like what you're saying, like Plebs is almost like the old guard in a way now. Um, Surf Slayer also old guard, I guess, since they were around for so long, but, but Plebs is definitely like the staple team now. Yeah. Uh, Mark, do, do you remember if, you, if you've casted more of Surf Slayer or Plebs or is it about equal? Who, who have you seen the most uh, this season? I, it's probably around about equal. Maybe a, maybe a little bit more of Surf Slayer than I mm -hmm. have seen of Plebs, I think. Um, on the grand scheme of things, I think I've seen Surf Slayer more. Um, but they're doing. They are looking really interesting. Like their their team is definitely like a fast paced team. It's kind of like similar to Slip plebs in a way. But there's they, they always have a different strategy. So it's always something different than what you're expecting as well. Sometimes so they're doing something different um, that you're kind of not expecting. Or kind of like the last battle as well was was a really interesting one from Sarah It looked like they were like we were clearly losing it, and then all of a sudden they just team rushed the whole way through. <laughs> And, and finished it in, in no time and it was just it was madness i don't know how where it came from because yeah. there was literally one minute left or something against uh 
uh, Slavs, I think it was, that was on the last battle. Um, yeah, that was... I thought nah, they're not even capping A or B. That's it. The game's <laughs> over, and then all of a sudden it went from A, B, C, and then home within a matter of minutes. And I was just like, okay, that was not expected, but they they done it and performed really well. And the fact that they can do it, even though they're that close to the end, and never gave up. There was no end spirit. We're a little like that's it. We're giving up. We're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. They kept going through it, even with that small amount of time left, and still managed to come out on top. So yeah, they've definitely got fighting them, and they're ready for this. I'm sure for the final. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And um, I remember talking to uh, to the team captain from Swift Slayer as well, and and they were also saying how they like to approach a game like a, a little more slow, maybe compared to other teams. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that. Like you said, that we've seen Surf Slayer just as well execute fights and and battles like very quickly and like just executed extremely well. Um, but they tend to sometimes. Um, like walk around their enemy for a bit, feel them out, see where they go, and then act on that. And um, you could see it especially on Cora Castle against mm -hmm. uh, Blame Elias. Yeah. Uh, you you casted that game as well, right? I, I, I think you did at least. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah, I think you did. Where are I they, can't like... even remember when I did last yeah. week. Never mind. Exactly, that's yeah, the same before. for me. But I recall this because um, they walked around all the way to the back on the wall with almost all their heroes, and then back to the front and it was really funny to see but yeah um and then plebs of course yeah they, yeah that's the thing they, they they're, they're slow to start off but then they think they work when they start getting into the fight that's when the speed changes like mm -hmm. you can notice it, it is definitely like a thing you did a spot to go at and that's why it took so long at start against uh, mm -hmm. the last battle that they were in it took so long for them to, before they got a point that was surprised they they went on to win it to be honest mm -hmm. um but yeah, it was it was definitely a little on them down, figuring out his positions and then going right all out. As soon as they do move, they do move fast. And when they work together mm -hmm. as a group, as soon as they're already organized, like they've set up for that long and they've looked at many, many opportunities and then they've used it. So definitely works for them. It's yeah. done well for them just now. Yes. As they've not really lost yet in yeah. all the series anyway. Yeah, I like it. It's, uh, I would really it, like to... It will maybe be the... Oh, yeah, go ahead. It will maybe be the characteristic of the match. Yeah, maybe the, this this will be the characteristic of this match. It's mm -hmm. uh, we have two teams with a very order gameplay mm -hmm. on team play, so maybe we we, we will have uh, only two fights, two big fights mm. uh, in the game, and uh, after the game it's over. <laughs> yeah, it might happen. It might be extre extremely explosive. Mm -hmm. Like I'm so curious about how we like try to find like what character sizes or like it's, it's typical for both teams but maybe they are kind of similar in a way where they execute it so perfectly they look for the perfect fight and they just try to end it with that one um it, it might just happen but then we might also see the clash both teams actually like fighting head to head toe to toe and going for like the last unit the death match on the point like that would be really cool as well but uh, we'll see it's going to be good all right um before we go on with all the other ones um oh, I'm, yeah. we're actually going to get um uh, smock uh, the team captain from impact into the uh, into the podcast together with a translator um and we'll do a short interview with them uh, about their season win because they finished all their games actually in the playing division um they're confirmed the season winner for the playing division um and we'll have, uh, be having a short like interview with those guys um talk to them about the playing division uh, we haven't seen them that much, honestly. Uh, I know you haven't, Mark, like you said, and uh, me as well, just as much. So we'll just get them in there and then uh, talk to them for a little bit. Like all the screens that you're seeing right now from us, they might be a little weird, but they'll move back once they have left again. But let's just get them in there. All right, there we go. That's one. And there's Smok as well. All right, welcome, Masui and Smok. I guess. Hi, hi. Welcome. Uh, you're in the podcast right hi. now, so welcome hi. to the both of you. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey. Uh, you can see on my on the screen I shared what we can see, um, so you have kind of an idea. Um, I'm not going to fix the screens because it's just the way it is right now. Uh, it's going to be too much of a thing to work it out, so we'll just go from there. Um, but thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, all good. Um, yeah, so Smok, you're the team captain. Uh, you brought the translator with you as well, just in case. Yeah, I'm a team member. 
through as well. So that was good. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the season win for the play in division. How do you feel about uh, winning the season there? And you can translate it if you want. Ee, sezonlu kazanmamız hakkında nasıl hissediyorsun düşüncelerinden? Ee, yani en alt ligdeydik. Ee, rakiplerimiz bizim seviyemizin biraz altındaydı. Ee, zaten geçmişimiz olduğu için, arkadaş gururda olduğumuz için, birimizin oyun tarzını bildiğimiz için güzel taktiklerle sanki birimizin oyun tarzını biliyorduk. Yes, so we played in the playing division, which was, I'm not going to say easy, <laughs> but we were as a team where, yes, it's a new established team, but we all know each other, we're mm -hmm. friends, we've been playing together for a long time. So with good preparations and strategies, we've managed to get the season win on our division. Yeah, good to hear from you. And actually, you made it look easy. How did you make it look easy? Kolay gibi göründü. Nasıl yaptınız diyor. Yani e, şöyle taktiklerde gerçekten çok çalıştım. Hani çok çalıştık. Taktiklerde gerçekten çok çalıştık. Oynayış tarzımız da hele hele e, hero. Oynayışı ile ilgili bayağı çalıştık. Yani kolay olmasının sebebi biraz o. Yep. Fazla çalıştık. So we prepared well for each match. Uh, and yes, during the match, during the game, as a spectator, you might think it was easy, but the preparation took a lot of time and effort. Uh, we were we were ready for each match, and we've improved our hero plays as well. So. For us, it was a kind of we, we got better along the way as well. Mm -hmm. So, our first matches were a bit hectic, chaotic, but as we moved on, we kind of improved everything. The system is just solid now, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, again, it might look easy as <laughs> if you're spectating the game, but the ba at the background, we prepared a lot. Yeah. Nice, that's interesting to hear. So you do feel like you improved over the season. Um, Corto, I know you've got a question for Impact as well after last uh, last Sunday. Uh, I have a question for the for future. No, not from, from before, I have a question okay. for future. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a, a team uh, in a rustic pool, actually? Uh, you are um, af afraid, I say afraid, to to play against. Uh, Rastik liginde böyle çekindiğiniz bir takım var mı? İleride karşılaşacağınız. Uh, Rastik. Ben yeah. genel ileri içinde söyleyebilirsin. Yani. He's thinking. Yeah, yeah. <gülüyor> Kebaps ve o dinleyeceğim. O dinleyeceğim. Ben kebapsa her. Nothing. And uh, not YAA then, because they also seem pretty strong. And uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, hmm. Another question. Of... Ya da güçlü. Ondan korkmuyor musunuz? Çekimiyor musunuz diye. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pretty clear answer then. <laughs> good, good, good. All right. No. Quarto, go ahead. Next question. Yeah, it's just a good question. It's about the, the last week. And uh, so what do you think about uh, your match against uh, Arconaut? Because it was only you, you only one defeat. So what can you talk about? It? Yeah, Argo match is also yelled. Yeah. Argo maçının sorusu geldi. Ha. Ya çok hazırlıksızlık. Gerçekten çok hazırlıksızlık. Bir de bir e, namalüp bir rehavet vardı. Ya yani namalüp olduğum için rehavet vardı. Alırız kafasından. Evet. So it was the only match that we weren't prepared. Uh, you know, we didn't do our preparations, strategies etc. 
and honestly our team was really relaxed with the secured win as well mm-hmm. so let's say we didn't prepare that much. we didn't get prepared for that match as good as we should have mm-hmm. also congratulations to Argonauts I think it was a do or die match for them so that's what happens when a non-prepared team and a prepared team plays against each other yeah yeah interesting to see it's true yeah all right thanks okay, uh, thank Ma- you yeah mark you got any specific questions uh, for the impact team i yeah i've uh, i've not really had a chance to see you guys at all really in the playing divisions and obviously looking at the stats and position you are in in the in the playing and not really losing apart from the last game there against argonauts um obviously guys at EU1, which kebabs. so you're part of kebabs and stuff as well. Kebabs. Oh, so you know these guys kebabs. and that's why you're scared of kebabs as well, potentially, because you know your <laughs> your friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. And our friendship goes way back when. Because so. you guys, you guys weren't originally know. on EU1, were you? You just were on EU... We were. We were. We were. We've been... Uh... I think most of our team coming from EU3, which mm-hmm. was merged in Season 7, so mm. I don't think we have a new transferred member at oh, all. Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm getting kind of good. I've not seen you yet, but we will definitely get to see you very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. yeah, so then looking ahead, so since you finished first in the play in division, uh, there's a very big chance uh, you get to play in the highest division next season. How do you look forward to competing against all the top teams next season that'll be the last question bir sonraki sezon en üst ligde oynayacaksınız onda ne düşünüyorsunuz nasıl hazırlanacaksınız vesaire takımı canlı tutuyoruz yeni oyuncular alıyoruz iddialıyız çok iddialıyız Kesinlikle ilk üçte olacağımıza inanıyorum. Uh, böyle şeyler. Yeah, for the goal, main goal is right now keeping the team alive because mm-hmm. the, the, there are going to be players leaving, and so we have to fill the gaps in. But we are confident. We are confident that we can be on the top three throughout the season for the next season. Mm. Uh, we'll prepare well, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. That's interesting. That's a strong statement saying that you can com- yeah, you might be like able to compete against it. Yeah. Uh, it's not like Yeah, from our screams we kind of know we can, so. Hmm. Cool. So I understand you've also been screaming already against some of the top teams. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right, I'm looking forward to you guys uh to That's seeing what you guys I'm play. Preparations. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right, like I like it. Yeah, so you. you're you're very ambitious. Look, going into next season, um, you've clearly proved yourselves in the first uh, yeah, play. Yeah, both ambitious and confident. Yeah, yeah, you seem to be confident. I like it. Um, so after an easy season, let's see if you can, you can continue to improve uh, throughout the next season. Um, thank you for joining us today, and I hope to talk to you soon again. Yeah, thanks for having us here. Yeah. Bye bye guys. Thanks. See you. See you later. See ya. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> All right. We're back again. Um, let's see. Let me get this going. All right. So a bit slower maybe than we're used to, but that's what you get when you have different languages. Um, but all good. Great. Great interview. Uh, I hope I hope it was some good insight. Um, interesting to talk to another team that we haven't seen that much. Um, and one team that's maybe going to leave a big impression on all of us in next season. Um, what is your general impression that you get from from the team, Porto, Mark? Go, Mark. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean they're very confident, kind of standing team, and obviously they they kind of know who to look out for uh, in prior. Or like they said, they've been pra- uh, planning and prepping before every single matchup ready to see probably looking at videos past VODs potentially of the how the other team that they're playing wanted to go on in advance mm-hmm. in the in the structure sort of league system so that's kind of what you expect from a team that's looking to compete 
uh, against the, the better teams and the better sides and stuff as well. So mm-hmm. if they can continue to do that and keep that confidence up, then you're only going to get better and progress, even play against the, the bigger teams and stuff as well. So uh, it's definitely a good uh, good atmosphere that it sounds like they've got uh, going into it anyway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, good points. Quarter, anything that stood out to you? Um, yeah, think, yeah, the most, uh, for, for me, the, what is the most important for, uh, the, the first thing I see in the team of Impact Esports, mm-hmm. it's uh, um, uh, uh, directly at the first match, uh, they have a good uh, team play and they, are, and they stay always compact. And uh, uh, because we, uh, a lot of team um, uh, a long time before to play together, and uh, them at the first match they, they in the competition with the first time we we, mm-hmm. we see them, uh, they have a good game team play, and uh, and so it's a uh, it's a good uh, augur for the for the future. Also. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we could see we can see in the play, and especially that the new teams and even some teams in the Rustic Division actually have problems or trouble staying together, fighting the fights like in a proper way. And Impact clearly doesn't have those kind of issues to to that extent. I guess they are performing very consistently, uh, for sure. And I like to hear that even though they seem to be so strong uh, without preparation, they, it's not so easy to be the team that is actually fighting really hard for it. Like like they said, like commenting about uh, the, the game from last weekend where they didn't take it seriously against Argonautas and actually losing one. Um, but at the same time, they are confident that if they prep well, they could even beat the top teams in the feudal division. So that's something uh, interesting to look forward to um, going into the, the next season. Um, and then something else that stood out to me was the off season, because we've seen that uh, even last season when there was only three weeks or four weeks in between the seasons, um, there were lots of team, t- team and roster changes. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how that affects all the teams as well going into the season two. So we'll see how, how that goes as well over the next couple of months. Um, it'll be interesting to follow for sure. All right. Um, let's get into some more action, guys, because we need to speed yes. it up a little bit. Um, and we'll, let's start with talking about the play. We'll just go <laughs> one by one through the divisions and then we can talk about anything else we would like to talk about. Um, so I'll just get them on the screen right here uh, for you guys to see. Um, quickly running down the last round, uh, Divinity tied by Elia, Wildblood tied looking for team and Argonautas won against Impact. Um, and the matches for next week are going to be looking for team against Argonautas, but Elia versus Wildblood, Crypto versus Divinity. Now on the Discord, uh, you can actually see what tiebreaker matches could end up um, happening in this pool division. And if you look at the standings right now, you can see that almost all teams could technically make it to uh, fourth place. And fourth place would actually get you into a higher division for this league. So only Divinity is not going to reach fourth place because they will have a five points maximum. It will not get them at six points, but you need at least six points to get there. And then looking for team, Crypta, Pelia, Wildblood could all go into that um, fourth, third or second place. Um, Argonaut is pretty much confirmed to be in the top four, um, but it depends where they end up, how high they of course go uh, for the next season. But many tiebreakers could happen there. And so what it depends on is equal points and then equal head to head results. And a lot of ties have happened in the playing division. So almost any team has to play against one another if it ends up, if it ends up with six points. So this will be, this could potentially be very messy. Uh, if we see more tiebreakers, uh, like ties throughout the the Sunday for playing division. So, yeah, Mark, I know you haven't seen as like many of these teams. Um, Corto, I know you've casted some some of these teams following Argonautas being the French team. Um, what do you kind of expect for the playing division? Looking at the matches as well. Oh. Uh... Yeah, I, I will look uh, Argonaut uh, vs uh, looking for team because mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah, it's my house, so uh, mm-hmm. I want to follow them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and uh, but uh, Paida, Paida and the White Blood uh, must be uh, an interesting match because mm-hmm. the team are very fine. The, they fight for the for the third place, and uh, mm-hmm. 
they have a, a same parcours, the same way. So it must be interesting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think, like you said, the yeah, last... Yeah, if I'm looking... Oh, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Upon looking uh, to me... When you, yeah, for, from my perspective, obviously, Argonauts in the position they're at, and uh, they, they seem to be pretty... They're, they're quite an organized team on the, mm -hmm. on the server. They play a lot together, so I assume... If these guys and obviously you guys from looking for a team, it's going to be because that's a mixed bag of players and stuff. And obviously they're they've been gelling and getting used to playing again, like with each other and stuff. It makes it a little bit harder. So I think Argonauts will maybe pick that one off, and they'll be definitely guaranteeing themselves that second spot for sure. Um, well, blood, similar idea. They're a well educated, thinking well uh, thing we decide. But I, I've not really seen Paella with skills. I don't know if they're quite close because, as you can see on the points and obviously in the system the way they are, they're, they're both kind of neck and neck with each other, uh, mm -hmm. both on that six points and one one one draws and then the, the ties and stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two battle against each other because they could be very well matched. So that'll be definitely one of the ones for guaranteeing that top four will be a, an interesting fin uh, finish here. Mm -hmm. And obviously Crypto looks like they could potentially get, uh, get an extra easy, they want an extra eight, three points from this one against Divinity because Divinity so far seems to be on the struggle bus in comparison mm -hmm. to the majority of the rest of the league and stuff so maybe you know you never know we might see a little upset there from uh, Crypto if Divinity could pull a little win here and um, get their first win <laughs> be interesting to see how it's going to end up but yeah it's yeah. definitely going to be there's going to be different positions throughout the, the matchups anyway mm -hmm. that's for sure yeah definitely I think I agree like like you said Argonauta seems to be the clear favourite to get at least second place here um, Wildblood has been very consistent, the German team, um, but they haven't been able to get that many like wins, clearly. Um, but I feel like they are the more consistent team. But Elia has, for example, lost uh, a game against Divinity. Divinity clearly being the weakest team so far in playing division. So they have been shaky at times, even losing games game against Looking for Team, for example. They almost lost the match against Looking for Team as well. Uh, Crypta have also been pretty consistent, but they've not being able to like actually get the wins sometimes and looking for team has just been like stepping it up sometimes so they could get it but realistically i do think that okay arcanatus might take the win and then wildblood and paelia will be like the decider because let's say if they tie against each other and crypta takes the win crypta would go to eight points wildblood paelia seven points and suddenly wildblood and paelia would have to play a tiebreaker for fourth place and the other one would get fifth for example um or, and it, and if Wildblood or Paella wins, then Crypta goes to six points, and then those like either Wildblood or Paella would have to play a tiebreaker against Crypta. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's, it's going to be interesting to follow for sure, um, and pretty important for these teams as well going into the following season. So, yeah. All right, um, let's leave it there. It's good. Uh, we can go. By well, the way, the they, yeah. they obviously the same in the, the matches. Oh, yeah, that what it is. No, no, go ahead. You want to say no something, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say just because of obviously the way the matches time off and stuff. Obviously, Argonauts games first, so mm -hmm. they're they're going to kind of guarantee themselves second like spot. Then it's Wellbloods if they potentially win, then that's their point straight away. Then you know you've got your top three mm -hmm. after the first two matches potentially, yep. and then it's just the, the battle between whether Crypto manages to finish that win off and who finishes mm -hmm. in fourth at that point. So yeah, it'll be interesting uh, yeah. to see because they'll be they'll all be keeping an eye on Crypto and Divinity for the last match. Yeah, definitely yeah, true. For the most part, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely true. Like it, it might end up very easy, and we, we could go. see no tiebreaker. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's go to the rest of the division. Now. Um, this one is very close at the top. Um, the the middle and the bottom. CB. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, just for an apartheid for your for your information, you have this week you have uh, maybe four or five seconds of delay of lag when we yeah, talk. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I, I was wondering so. what was going on with that, but yeah, yeah, I don't know either. But there's there's some lag. We'll see what happens after it. But yeah, it's fine. <laughs> we just have to do with it. I know this from the start it was a bit slow this time, but you guys will manage for sure. Um, all right, so going into the rustic division. Um, last week we saw Odin's win against Toriki, YAA winning against Czech Paladins, Kebabs winning against Baguette Mangers, Love and Devotion surprisingly actually tying the game against Holy Crusaders. Um, and if we look at the standings, like I said, the bottom three teams are all pretty much confirmed. Um, at the bottom they won't be able to make it to fifth place, um, where Chocolate Paladins and Holy Crusaders have also confirmed in the middle they can't go really go up or, or higher. 
So all teams are pretty much sitting where they are, except for the top three teams. Uh, with YA and Odin's Legion facing each other for, uh, you could say, a final um, in their last match. Um, depending on who is going to win that one, uh, they might end up first or second. Uh, but Kebabs has got the, probably got the best cards because they've got an easy, easier game in the last round. So they are almost guaranteed to finish with 19 points. And then only YAA could catch up to them by winning against Odin's Legion. And then, depending on what Kebabs does again, Odin's Legion could technically make it to first place. But more realistically, they would go to second place. Um, but again, this could be really close. Um, so what do you guys think? Uh, you've both been watching some of these teams um, and at least know a little bit about it. Uh, Mark, you shoot first this time. You go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, first, first out. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, just because, uh, just because of my like, like I've watched quite a lot of these games, obviously recently, and uh, the way the the table is kind of set up, kind of summarizes exactly how you expected it to have went when you watch them back, matches back and stuff like the positional wise and stuff. Obviously, everybody in the league is definitely performing pretty well. Like there's some teams in here that are new to the league and stuff as well, so they are kind of getting used to it and getting themselves like. I figured out what they're doing. Uh, y is looking really strong and kebabs is just like honestly watching them sometimes it's unreal. It's like watching plebs all over again. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, they're definitely a strong side. And then Otis Legion who had the experience from last year, uh, like last season, sorry, um like the first ever season we did of this, they've definitely progressed and got much, much better as a side. And you can see it in the standards now that where they're sitting here and this them they're getting in that position to, almost to get put into the the, the big league uh, could put an upset here with uh, mm -hmm. YAA on top you know they could easily top them uh, at this point and if Kebabs end up losing uh, against Holy Crusaders which <laughs> is most unlikely but they're not a bad side Holy Crusaders they mm -hmm. could pull off wins like against teams you don't expect and stuff as well so you never know they, they, they do have a good solid bunch of players in there so it could be a really interesting end mm -hmm. to this uh, this matchup I think yeah that's it matches I actually think that's a very interesting point you make there. Like Holy Crusaders, like we have seen quite a few strong teams like lose a single game against a weaker team. We could see No Beaches taking the taking a game off Surf Slayers, for example, in Feudal Division, just by like pulling off a crazy defense on uh, on Hidden City. And like I think there's on Harbor City, especially if the, if the bands are right for you, you you could pull some crazy defenses on it, or for example, uh, and just take take one game off, and that actually makes a huge difference in the standings here so yeah let's, uh, we'll see how it goes uh Corta, what about you what do you think about these teams here yeah i don't see uh as a match of rustic division last week mm -hmm. but uh, for the for the next week uh Iraka and odin legion will be the most important match because mm -hmm. he he have a uh, he, he it have a big impact on the top three, on mm -hmm. the order top three. Mm -hmm. But yes, we will see with the performance of the Holy Crusader, if they can make the uh, trouble in the with uh, with the result with kebab in uh, in this top three mm -hmm. and uh, uh, top three very separated of the rest of the division. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting. Too much interesting match. Yeah, yeah, for sure, very interesting and. Um... Like going into the next season, the the standings, the, as they are right now, won't really make make make much of a change going into the next season because the first, second, and third place for the Rustic Division are most likely going to the highest division, uh, with the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place all staying in the same division. Um, although, if we do get less teams than I'm expecting then only eight teams might go into each division and then the third place from the rest of the division might be uh, going back one division. Um, but I do expect to get 10 teams in each division and so any team that ends up third in the rest of the division should be guaranteed to go into the highest division uh, next season. So the championship is on the line, second, third. Um, like it's all for the prices as well, which are confirmed now by my games. Um, so there's definitely a lot of stuff on the line for these teams, aside from the honor and the glory. Um, but so, yeah, that'll be good. It'll be good fights for sure. And yeah, YA and uh, Otis Legion, that match is going to be very important for, for this conclusion here in the Rustic Division. Um, 
How do we how do we feel about these teams going into the highest division? What do you expect from YA Kebabs Odin's? Looking at the feudal teams right now. I think the majority of them actually can compete, um, and obviously with this so see the way this uh, season has gone, they've got six matches here. They, they've managed to like grow and get, yeah, uh, like playing the game together, and uh, and working their strength the bigger league against the more kind of solid teams that we know can perform and don't probably not that they don't need the practice they will always practice and they always keep up that practice just like the guys in kebabs and ya are doing just now as well i know this mm -hmm. legion definitely scrimming a lot and all that experience they're already scrimming against these teams like plebs um surf slurs and stuff so they're already getting that experience already and it's just putting it into the tournament strategy side of things now where they go right and now we've got to change the strategy a little bit from what the scrim was about because obviously all your hands um but they might be able to find things in these little scrims that they can find a way around their opposition and uh, potentially use that against them eventually with uh, a new strategy and something different that they could potentially pull at the back which is good to see because uh, obviously, the more practice they're putting in, the more the more games they're getting out of there as well. The the better chance they're going to stand when they eventually go back up into that league or go into that league, for example. Yeah, definitely true. Uh, Corta, what do you think? Yeah, I think it will be very interesting because uh, uh, we will see uh, Ser Slayer and Pleb have a, a slow gameplay. Mm -hmm. they, they like to play complex and strategy and uh, and uh, on the other side the uh, Igweka and kebab come with a, a aggressive gameplay mm -hmm. and uh, we, we can see very, very, very well on the fjord map mm -hmm. and um, they, <laughs> they can uh, attack always and always it's a continued flow and uh, so the, the, the gameplay is, the team play is not the same and uh, uh they, they maybe can move and make to move the meta and move uh, everything so it will be interesting to have a uh, different gameplay uh to fight again against. yeah for sure and i i like what you're saying as well like why in kebabs like you said if if you if any of you has hasn't watched the game on highly short between those two teams you you want to rewatch that game because um it was crazy aggressive like so much fighting going on it was like last seconds capture of the points and it was absolutely insane um driving me crazy just watching it um but like i said the play style is vastly different and i think impact esports like being close to kebabs as well might also bring that into the fuel division so they might just change the whole way in in which teams maybe approach um yeah the matches and the gameplay and um if the meta is right and it allows for aggressive gameplay perhaps we could see a, a change in the meta or Maybe a, a change in how strong teams are compared to each other. So, yeah, that'll be really good to see. We'll, we'll see how that goes uh, in the future for sure. Um, all right, so we move to the uh, Fuel Division now. I think so, right? Or is there anything else you would like to add to what we've been, what, what we've been saying here? Yeah, yeah I, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. All right, perfect. And right, let's put it up here. Uh, because this is where all the money should go to. Uh, it's the Feudal Division, guys. The highest division. We've seen all the good teams face off, face off against each other. And I'm pretty sure we're still confident in what we've seen. That, that these teams are really the best. Um, of course, at the bottom, we got Rose, Slap Blockers and Sloths. Um, together with Pontcard, which is a surprise. Um, especially considering what they did last season. Ending up second in the very close final against Plebs. Um, but Pontcard, as we know missing some key players missing some like stability that they did have last season um so they will be looking to like, rebuild probably and going into the next season hopefully um but all these four teams are still fighting to actually not get get seventh or eighth place because that is what will get them into a lower division we know from a team like stop blockers that they don't mind because they are also rebranding performing a new team out of the jack team that uh, they originally started with um, so they they don't mind going down a notch, uh, but the other teams definitely want to stay in the highest division. Um, looking at the games from last week, we saw Pontegard tying against Slop Blockers, Plebs winning against Rose, Surf Slayer winning against Slavs, and Nobiches winning against Playmelias. 
uh, which actually secured no beach is most likely the third place um, so they will probably be running with the uh, with the third place prize here um, and blame alias will be stuck in fourth place um, if you look at the games that are ahead of us because blame alias playing as slot blockers should be an easy win for them no beaches against slavs should technically also be a good win for them and bond guard against rose is actually a pretty close win um, at the bottom because if rose wins wins against bond guard they suddenly jump ahead of bond guard and they are guaranteed out of the bottom two um, on the other hand if bond guard wins or get a tie bond guard is also confirmed to stay in the in the highest division so that's actually another game that will be interesting to to watch and to look at and then of course surf slayer versus plebs we've talked about it but that is going to be the final um for this sunday um they these two teams are going to decide who's going to be the season winner um so before we talk more about that match and what we expect from the map and the strategies um i would like to have your opinion on the other three matches that are going to happen as well uh corto i would like to start off with you this time there's the delay uh <laughs> You can just repeat the last of your sentence because ah, yeah, yeah, sure. you make wobble. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. All right, delay is troubling us this time. Um, yeah, so my question was, uh, before we go to Surf Slayer and Plebs, uh, what do you think about the first three matches? So the Blame Elias, the No Beach, the Pond Guard, the Rose, the Slops, the Slop Blockers. What do you see uh, happening there? Okay, but yes, but like as you say, uh, um, Blamelias must be win vs uh, slot blocker logically, and uh, no beef. Uh, I think maybe Rose vs Pongard uh, would be interesting for the if Rose maybe uh, do a, a good, uh, a very good match, and uh, Pongard is not here. But uh, I think we we we don't see uh, a surprise on mm. this free match. Yeah, it Sorry. seems unlikely. Uh, Mark, <laughs> do, you, do you feel similar? Do you think the, these three teams will just take it in the last round? Uh, um, kind, kind of. I think no beaches in the sort of pulled people off very, very, very late on and potentially their aggressiveness sometimes um, is what actually loses them the matches sometimes. Mm -hmm. But... The way they've been playing it, like it's only been like a few minutes, like a minute or two before the the cap is taken, and they're actually losing the point. So like, <laughs> they could perform this one here and actually surprise the beaches potentially, and that could give for them if they put that pressure on uh, straight away. The blame Elias gets the win. The beaches are already under that little bit of pressure where they, if they want to finish in that position, mm -hmm. they have to like perform and get at least a point from it to to guarantee it. Um, otherwise, the uh, Slavs could actually be that one that kind of upsets them and stops them getting that third place finish. Um, mm -hmm. And it could be an interesting match for that one. Uh, Rose and Pongard, obviously, at that point in time, it doesn't really necessarily mean anything at this point for any positioning change wise. Um, obviously, Rose could stop them being potentially uh, getting put out of the league. Um, so. Rose, uh, the way Pond Guards can perform, Guard could uh, win this one, but Rose aren't easy pushovers, so it will be, it'll be an interesting end because mm. obviously Rose have got something to play for. Pond Guard not really so much. Uh, they can't really lose out on this um, overall because they've got that five points already, but mm -hmm. that chance of uh, potentially losing the, the Rose, Rose fight could, uh, could, could not come that, down a wee peg, you know, we just never know. It's yep. uh, yeah, true, and it's interesting to see Rose fight against. Nothing is ever certain mm -hmm. in these kind of matchups. Yeah, yeah, nothing is sure for definitely true. And uh, we've had a couple of team captains actually commenting about Rose that they are stronger than they uh, have shown so far. So perhaps in this last round they finally like get up there and fight and show us what they're capable of. Um, it's definitely on the line for them because if they do win. They get to stay in the field division. If they don't win, they'll have, they'll be forced to play in the in the lower division next season. So we'll see what happens there. All right. Um, let's talk more about the final match because that one is really important. Um, and what I would like to have your opinion on is actually the map that these teams are going to play on. It's going to be the Harbor City map, um, and we've seen 
both teams play on it uh, last season. We've also seen them play on that map in the CB CBL final, uh, last CBL final, where these two teams faced, faced off against each other. Uh, that was the latest clash that they had. And they also played one uh, match on Harbor City back then as well. Um, Surf Slayer won it in the end on the defense, uh, but Plebs was actually winning most fights there. Um, so what do you expect from Harbor City going into that? We saw some different strategies last season. Um, what is your general idea about the map? All right, Mark, you can start Mark, off. Yeah, the delay is there. Yeah. Oh, okay, with him. me first. That's... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, um, to be honest, it's, it's going to be interesting. I think this could go kind of almost all the way, if I'm honest. Um, mm -hmm. Surfslayers um, in their defenses, uh, obviously, are fairly fairly robust and not easy to break down. And plebs, obviously, are good at kind of doing that. But without the the artillery strategies and stuff that you can't be played, obviously, in the in this rules, it's going to be interesting to see mm -hmm. how they maneuver their stuff around the map to kind of catch Surfslayers out or to catch anybody napping here to be honest because the map is it's not an easy one but it's also not like there's opportunities all over the map um with different ways to play the map so it'll be interesting to see how each other do it because practice in it and just to check to see how the other team might have played it in the past as well just to mm -hmm. see if they can they can learn from that and change it from that but yeah overall it's going to be a really interesting match i think if it does go all the way as well it's going to be uh, really interesting to watch all the way uh, it's like a full battle because we know last time round in the, the the last CB rivals it was obviously Pongard at that point mm -hmm. and that was very like close until Plebs like pulled out the bag um mm -hmm. to get that win but yeah it was uh it didn't look in their favor on that last map for them but then they end up turning around and uh wiping the, the any boys so they, I can mm -hmm. see that happening um with Plebs because they just somehow when there's nobody there sometimes manage to pull something out the bag and I think Pleb's strategies and their speed and how they react to a match is going to be vital to how or who finishes on top here because mm -hmm. if they if they take a lack of switch off for a second, Sersler might capitalize on that or or vice versa. So yep. it's definitely gonna be a close matchup. But I don't think I can see I, I don't think I call it as a an obvious plebs win at this point. Mm -hmm. But it's never known. Yeah. Right, Corta? Uh yeah, me uh we we can uh, we can say but we can talk about the um, uh, the ban the unit mm. ban of the match yeah. uh, the, the team ban Reaper and Berserker yeah. and uh, they ban nothing about uh, cavalry so Cataphracter is open uh, like Modao or like Forte enfin. so maybe we can expect is to to don't see a match uh, on the wall and mm. maybe see the match. Uh, in the hunter um, of the city, mm -hmm. just after the door, you know, and, uh, at the bottom of the stair, mm -hmm. and uh, to match with a lot of movement and uh, uh, inside uh, a lot of fight inside the city. But uh, we will see, yeah. because maybe it's a brainstorm of the <laughs> for the strategy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We yeah. This, so you think that mm -hmm. but we we do this. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So uh, the bans are really interesting to me because, like you said, so we had um, Plebs banning, let me double check this, Plebs banning the Berserker, Surf Slayer banning the Reaper. Um, Plebs had to ban first, so they banned the Berserker, then Surf Slayer banned the Reapers. Um, Surf Slayer will attack first, Plebs will defend first. Um, so what is interesting to me is, like you said, like Reapers, Berserkers, very strong on the wall, uh, very strong in general, but especially on the walls. Um, and what is open now is Jeffelins and Falconetti. And this opens up the strategy where you actually try to defend the walls, destroy some towers. We've seen many teams do it, especially No Beaches, for example, against Surf Slayer, who were the victim of uh, put, picking Calf, where No Beaches picked no Calf at all, and suddenly they were uh, ahead of units because they were fighting on the wall. Um, so there's so many options for this team to, to pick. And because it's only two games, um, if one of these two teams actually comes up with a strategy that uh, wins them uh, a game and actually tilts it into their favor. There was no return, Be not like Mark, like you commented on during last season's final where we had the best of five and perhaps actually had time to pull back the game after Pondcard actually won it uh, mm -hmm. in, in one against them. 
what do you think about yeah, cause... about that fault? Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know. It's it's a it's, a, it's always a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't even know what what to say to be honest. And in, in return, I can't. What did you say for that last part before you said that there? Because that delay kind of threw mm. me off a little. Oh bit. yeah, yeah. Sorry about the later. Yeah. So, like, one of these two teams could like pull pull out a surprise strategy, uh, winning mm -hmm. of course like a single game for them. And it's not like last season's final where there's a best of five and you can come back after losing one because if you've lost one, it's like let's say if Surf Slayer lose one game, it will be a tie and Plaps will actually take a season win because they are ahead by two points now. Yeah, yeah. So it, it there's actually a lot of pressure on Surf Slayer to like win. They have to win from the start. They have to win the attack right away and then like take it in the defense again. Yeah, yeah. That's that. Yeah, that. I forget that this strategy is like that. There's not like a mm -hmm. best of three, so yeah, it definitely makes it a difficult thing for surf slurs. Um, granted, are they are they the guys attacking first? Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, on the attack, yeah, you're already at disadvantage. You've got to do something. You've got to take points. So, um, I always feel that plebs in this position are definitely at the the most strongest position because on a defense, you're already won until the battle starts, and even when the battle's on, because you could easily just defend the points and that's it. You know, you don't have to do anything majorly contested. And we know Harbour City, without artillery, there is no stopping the siege towers, for example. You can mm -hmm. stop them the one, the first bit, but will plebs use the strategy of using javelins? Will they start using things like that to make sure they can just constantly stop the the uh, siege towers coming up? Because if they stop the siege towers, I've seen Harbour City defended completely and not mm -hmm. getting taken A. So that could be a strategy, yeah. but it also could be like that could be what loses them the matchup because if you overcommit towards A and try to do as much as that, you never know. You can lose out on like the the full push and the supply points, which are crucial on this map mm -hmm. um, for the attackers. Um, obviously, defenders, you can get them blocked off and then that can stop you pretty much doing anything for Harbour City. So... Surf Slayers will need to come into a, a nice fast strategy because they, they don't have all the time in the world. The, tre the siege towers take a long enough time as it is to get to the wall because of the size of the map. Um, and you know how you have seen people sally out and uh, use that as a as a strategy to kind of slow down the pushes of the mm -hmm. siege towers as well because obviously you're not going to use majorly big units for that. But uh, yeah, it could be a, a deterrent to slow down the time and so it make it really difficult with Surf Slayers. Mm -hmm. But will we? Yeah, they have to. They have to do. They have to pull something out the bag for their attack, definitely to give themselves a chance. So that's yeah. tough yeah, for them sure. going ahead. Yep, good thoughts. Good thoughts. I like it. Um, Corto, anything specific from you? Uh, going, looking at the bands. What do you expect for for the attack from Surf Slayers? Well, they, it's like uh, Mark said. They, the pressure is on Surf Slayer, and they need to to to find a, a strategy to to to perturb to trouble pleb mm -hmm. to uh, for uh, for take the a point and uh, because we we know on this map uh, the the siege the tower is uh, very important and very difficult to connect so but the map is uh, is very big we have we, you have the door and you have the, another door on the left so mm -hmm. they need to find a strategy to to to to to move a pleb and uh, to to perturb the, the the gameplay of of, of pleb in defense, because uh, the um, uh, the most possibility for this match is one-one in defense, so uh, the player need to to tr to try something in mm -hmm. attack. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it will be yeah pressure is on for them. That's for sure. And Plebs being the methodical team and very strategic as well, they will use every single thing that's available on the map. We've seen that in like Grand Gloire, where they even used the artillery on the map to destroy like trebuchets and stuff like this, they used everything that was available to them. So Surf Slayer can definitely expect a very solid defense from, from the pleb side. And then we'll have to see if they are creative enough and aggressive enough to actually take the win on the on the attack right away. Um, we'll see, it will be very interesting. All right, um, coming to a conclusion guys, uh, as we have to finish this podcast uh, in a little bit. Um, anything specific you'd like to talk about or any closing words in general? Uh, Mark, you can start off again. Uh, nothing, nothing major, but just good luck to everybody fighting for the last matchups. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, put everything into it because it's a, it's a little bit of a break you're going to get uh, for the next seasons. Try and 
see if you guys can uh, perform and maybe even get your first win in the CB Rivals before the the end of the season's out. So let's uh, let's see some good fights and uh, have fun. Obviously, get the guys in chat as well and get as many people watching mm -hmm. the guys as possible. So share it with your houses and all the guys inside the community uh, that you already have uh, with your teams and stuff as well. So make sure that we can spread it as much as possible and try and get the community of uh, CB Rivals growing mm -hmm. and we could potentially get even more players and more more teams involved on a on a regular basis and make this even, even more competitive for strong houses and uh, strong teams coming in. Good words. Thank you for those. Yeah, Corta? Um, yeah, it's a sub the event uh, involves a lot and uh, it will be a, a, a, a, um, an important event in the, for the community. So it, this is good and a, a lot of players uh, take a lot of pleasure to a pleasure to, to participate in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can maybe talk about the, the communication of my game to about the support for the reward. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not very, the reward they give is not very logical. <laughs> but uh, but uh, they show a lot. Uh, they show uh, the support, and uh, because it's a um, it's a lot of reward for the, the number of teams, mm -hmm. and uh, they show the support with this, and uh, we, we try to to make uh, uh, the we we to to work to have the same reward, but uh, a different repartition, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe more uh, more logic, and uh, yeah. we will see with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so continuing what you said, Corto, uh, my games have um, provided us with prize support uh, for the top three for every division. Um, this is like a pretty big change compared to last season where you only had prizes for the top three, like for the for all, all teams together. Um, so this is already like a very big improvement and they're really trying to help us um, like get more support for the league. So um, we're, we're very grateful to community managers that are supporting us. Um, so that's really cool. and. Um, of course, guys, uh, if you're watching and listening, like Mark said, like uh, we hope that you as players and viewers and casters and everybody else continues to support the CB Rivals, um, but also the casters like follow Mark on Twitch, the also Nine Fingers, uh, Zelgius, whoever else is commentating as well. Uh, we got Life Hacks, we got uh, General Combo, we got uh, Glatzheimer, like all the casters I could name for you, they're all on the content creator channel um, in the Discord, so make sure to follow each and every one of them. Um, and it will just help to grow the game, go grow the community, and help grow the, the whole Zebra Rifles uh, community and league that is here. Um, and hopefully stay here as well in the future. Um, yeah, so with that, um, let's finish it there. Uh, thank you guys for joining me again on this week. Um, we'll see you on Sunday, that's for sure, um, as we'll be casting all the games together. Um, so see you on Sunday, guys. Thank you, and have a good day. Yep. Thank Pleasure. you. Have a good one, CB. Thank and you. Carl. Mm-hmm.